giving you a voice. Making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First Updates Now FRC is produced in partnership with the Blue Alliance. Keep up to date on all live and archive First Robotics events and team stats at thebluealliance.com. And by viewers like you. We need your help to keep fun at loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another season of Best of the West. Once again, every Monday, we'll be breaking down all of the FRC action in the Western region of the United States and Canada, from Colorado to California, Alberta to Arizona, all the way out to the beautiful islands of Hawaii. If you're interested in what's going on, we've got you covered. Every Monday, we'll cover the weekend's events, look forward to next week's matchups, and talk about what's going on in the FRC community. Reporting for first updates now, I'm Aiden Ferrer. I'm Bryce Croucher. I'm Grace Rosenvall. And I'm Alex Utzinger. Now it's a new season and that means new hosts joining us for the show. And we've also got several new contributors creating behind the bumpers and helping out behind the scenes. Grace, Alex, uh, why don't you introduce yourselves a bit more to our Best of the West fans? Hi, my name is Grace Rosenvall and I'm an alumni of Team 2122 Team Taters from Boise, Idaho. When I was on the team, I worked on robot design and assembly, strategy and outreach. Now that I've graduated from the team, I'm studying mechanical engineering at the University of Idaho. I still volunteer during the competition season, however, and you can find me emceeing this season at some P&W events and announcing at the Idaho Regional. I've watched fun since it started, and I'm excited to join the team and help make region recaps happen. Hey everyone, I'm Alex, an alumni and mentor for FRC Team 4183 out of Tucson, Arizona. I was a mechanical lead during my time as a student, but since becoming a mentor, I've worked more as a strategy and design mentor as well as in fabrication. I'm a current college student at the University of Arizona studying environmental science with an interest in soils and land management. I'm looking forward to being one of your hosts for the season's Best of the West Region Recap and talking nerdy about robots for the next six weeks of competition and championships. Well, we're super excited to have you both on board this year. We've got a lot of stuff to cover, and we're going to start with some Week Zero recaps. we got Week 1 events coming up this weekend, uh, but we did get a chance to see what's to come with the Week Zero events. Alex, you had an opportunity to visit Duel in the Desert. Give us a breakdown of what you saw and what you might predict for Infinite Recharge. Well, I had the pleasure to go up to Phoenix for the Week Zero scrimmage, Duel in the Desert, and I really saw teams taking full advantage of the extra time and spending the effort to really tune their mechanisms. Team 1726, the Nerds, had a strong showing with a complete robot at this event that was able to score in the outer goal pretty consistently as well as climb. With the robot finished so early, they will really have a great opportunity to tune and get their mechanisms dialed in. I also had the chance to check out the robot from the hosts of Duel in the Desert, Team 498, the Cobra Commanders. And while I didn't, got, didn't get the chance to see the robot on the field, they had quite the impressive low goal slash defense robot. This year, they opted to score in the low goal and have developed a very interesting support strategy of feeding balls to a stationary shooter in their protected zone that could play out very well for them. Well, let's open this up a bit more. Based off of any Week 0 play that you saw or just kind of your general feel, what are your predictions for Week 1 and beyond? Well, my team is lucky to have a permanent practice field this year, and we've been opening it to any local teams that want to come. Uh, although, you know, it's a somewhat pre-selected group for who has a robot and wants to come. Uh, I think that teams are more prepared this year than usual. And although some will always feel ill-prepared coming to a week one event, uh, I expect to see a lot of great match play, uh, especially in the playoffs. I think we'll probably see some greater than 15 cells scored in auto, triple climbs, and scores over 250. But maybe that's just my optimism shining through. Mm -hmm. Aiden, what do you think? Well, you're talking about the teams that feel ill-prepared, and I certainly know I'm in that camp. I'm begging for another couple of days before LA North, frankly. Um, I think we're going to see a lot of higher quality robots with a little bit of extra time. I think that little bit is just enough to get people where they need to be uh, robot-wise, but I think there is going to be a little bit of uh, lackluster practice, or, or teams could have wished that they had done more to drive around. This is a very driving-heavy game. 
Um, so I think the ill-prepared will show through, and week one might look a little bit more scuffed from a gameplay perspective, but these robots are going to be pretty quality. Yeah, and on the same point, I think this year's speed and maneuverability will be extremely important. During the week zero, zero, we started seeing some defense, and I feel that having a fast drivetrain and a really responsive ball mechanism uh, will be extremely important to teams' success, especially during qualification matches. However, during playoffs, I predict that the matches will be decided by who can spin the wheel of fortune and climb more than anything. Having a robot that can consistently climb and balance will be very important to winning those tight playoff matches, and the points for the rendezvous point are just too high to be ignored during eliminations. I could be wrong here, but I think that the ranking points available will differentiate teams and qualifications, but I don't think that it will win ma matches until we get to the tight fight for victory that is eliminations. I'm also looking forward to the return of Autonomous this year. I'm very excited to see what teams are able to do with the COTS parts available for automation and programming. The Limelight was released in 2018, but it seems to have really caught on this season. And I, for one, am extremely excited to see what teams are able to do with it. Uh, when I first saw Kickoff, um, the first thing it reminded me of was the 2016 game uh, for Stronghold. And I expect that our season's going to progress very similarly. Uh, in weeks one and two in 2016, towers weren't really captured at the beginning of the season. Uh, I mean, you would see one or two for an entire event. Um, but eventually, I expect it to be completely possible. In fact, going into the negatives, well, like in 2016, going into the negative scores, or in this case, uh, the shield generator being energized very quickly. Um, I bet we'll also see more inner port scores as teams are able to dial in their shooting mechanisms and possibly triple climbs like we saw out of Citrus Circuits on their reveal video. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely a lot to look forward to. Teams have been working on the robots now for about 50 days. And we're just a couple days away from seeing them in official events. So between Week Zero events, Fun's Premier Night, and Teasers, what are some of your favorite robots that you've seen so far? Well, for me personally, I am in love with the Mean Machine robot. That reveal video that got dropped was pretty hype. I think that that bot has a serious chance of making it to Einstein, especially with some drive practice uh, underneath your driver's belts. Um, but that thing is clean and mean. and. I am scared. I'm happy that I don't have to play against you in California because it's already hard enough to qualify as is. Um, and speaking of hard to qualify in California, I'm loving the Citrus bot as well. Uh, we've seen their reveal on premiere night and they pretty plain and simple video, but got straight to the point. They showed off a lot of potential. And I think, you know, we have a good chance of seeing year eight on Einstein from these guys. Yeah. Talk about scared, man. Those guys yeah. are crazy. Oh yeah, man. No, but very impressive so far. Uh, I'm still trying to catch up on reveal videos, but it feels like so many of them have come out in the last two days. From what I've seen so far, this year's really focused on maneuverability and speed. So when I was talking to Team 498 at Duel in the Desert, they have a drivetrain geared for uh, 20 plus feet per second, which uh, is kind of a little crazy fast for, for some of these Arizona teams. Uh, I think that's really exciting, and uh, it'll be a really good season for well-designed defense robots. However, I'm sure we'll see some some fantastic drivetrains from the California powerhouses like 1323 and 254 to avoid this defense. I uh, love the reveal of 4911 with their swerve drive and super satisfying ball storage system from last night. I look forward to seeing them this week at Glacier Peak. Yeah, um... I'm also looking forward to seeing 4911 and 2910 at Glacier Peak. A lot of the PNW reveals I've seen, including Mean Machine, have swerve drives, which I think is becoming just the trope in the PNW. So I think I also think this is the year of the swerve, uh, just with the, how the field is laid out, uh, being able to shoot into the goals. Um, but I also loved seeing 1678's video as always. They always have an impressive robot, impressive autonomous. But I think there's a lot of teams that we haven't seen yet that could be bringing some even crazier things to competition. Yeah, definitely. And uh, I think there's, you know, only so far that one can look ahead. And I've been a little distracted thinking about next week's competition. Uh, some of the teams I really want to see this week, uh, Cloverbots 3674, uh, who haven't made their own reveal video, but if you want to see them, they are featured in our own uh, reveal video. And uh, Jack and the Bot 4911, both revealing it, 4911's reveal night. Um, 1540 and 2990, who both were first seen at Corvallis, uh, and both look extremely strong. Uh, they're also some teams that uh, I've heard whispers about, uh, 
but haven't revealed their full robots like 1425 and 2046 that I'm excited to see. Um, certainly, I think there's a lot to look forward to in the Pacific Northwest um, as a region. Uh, I think the strength of teams is improving and Jack and the Bot's influence showing people that you can build a somewhat simpler robot and drive the pants off of it and go to Einstein has been really inspiring for the teams around here. Yeah, it seems like the P&W tends to push one another a lot further than most of these teams would get on their own. It's a lot of competition up there in recent years. Yeah. Yep. Well, we got reveal videos highlighting some of the best that these robots have to offer, but it doesn't quite show us what these robots are going to look like in official play. Fortunately, week one will feature three events in the best of the West region. Let's take a deeper dive into what's to come. Bryce, start us off in the PNW. Of course. Yeah, the uh, Clackamas Academy is shaping up to be a fantastic week. Uh, sorry, fantastic week one event. And many of Oregon's top competitors and a handful of guests from up north are going to be in attendance, including two of last year's winners that should be a, uh, it should be a good indication of things to come from our region. Uh, to give a general idea of what I mean, the last year's district points, uh, two of the top five teams and four of the top 10 teams in the region are going to be there this weekend. Uh, that includes captains of the winning alliance last year, 3674, the Culverbots, who I mentioned earlier. They're in good position to take the win again this year, but they're definitely going to see some fierce opposition from teams like 1540, the Flaming Chickens, Team 2990, Hotwire, who both had two weeks of practice since we last saw them in Corvallis. I mean, to have a robot done that early and already working is a good indication. Uh, my own team, 2471, we just unveiled our robot, uh, going to be there competing. And there's also sure to be great competition from some historically strong teams whose robots are still unknown, including Eric Code Zero, 5803 Apex Robotics, and 4488 Shockwave. Personally, can't wait to see how this event plays out. Uh, excited to be attending, so make sure to tune into the stream or stop by the pit and say hi if you're in the area. Grace, what do we have to look forward to up in Glacier Peak? Starting off the first of many Washington District events is the Glacier Peak event in Snohomish. It's looking to be both a very deep and competitive event, kind of a who's who of Western Washington, with all three winners from last year's event returning. That consists of our event host, 2930 Sonic Squirrels, 1294 Top Gun, and 2019 PNW District Championship winners, 2910 Jack and the Bot. Additionally, three of the Pacific Northwest District's nine rookie teams for this season will be in attendance, and I'm excited to see what they bring to the field. Glacier Peak is year after year one of the most high-powered events in the PNW, and this year should be no exception. Aside from the returning district champions 29-10, there are a handful of other teams to look out for. Like 4911, well, wait, who are they? Oh, right, the Cyber Knights <laughs> should be a double threat as well after a semifinalist placement in the Carver Division and a history of Chairman's Award wins. They'll be wrapping a sim startlingly similar shooter and swerve setup to what I've seen from 2910 already. Um, and I've seen a couple of those scattered throughout the PNW as well. Uh, another team to look out for is 2928 Viking Robotics, which was part of the 2017 Houston Championship winning alliance. And they regularly qualify for Worlds. Um, also to watch out for is 1318 Issaquah Robotics Society, a regular chairman's and regional winner contender. Up here in the Northwest, the Glacier Peak event name is rather fitting as we're still in the grips of winter. Well, at least where I live. So Aiden, what's happening down in sunny Los Angeles? Oh, well, let me tell you. California hosts only one week event this week one event this year but it may be one of the best events that we get to see all season things are going to get hot in thousand oaks california where we've got the second los angeles north regional with 42 teams bringing the heat it's sure to be a party of the best uh festival of champions if you will uh with houston champions 973 the gray bots and detroit champions 4481 team rembrandts from the netherlands facing off along with familiar champs faces like 359 the hawaiian kids and 1678 citrus circuits We'll also see some of California's finest, including 115 MVRT, defending LA North champions 2659 Robo Warriors, 3309 Friarbots, who will be looking to continue their nearly five-year streak of Chairman's Awards, 4414 High Tide, 5012 Griffin Gear, and 5818 Riviera Robotics. With lots of firepower coming right out of the gates, we're sure to see some high-level infinite recharge from the get-go. 
Though there's a large top layer of upper tier teams, what I think could make or break the eliminations bracket is actually going to be these third picks. If there's one event to watch this weekend. I think LAN is going to be one of the best insights we get to champs level play. So we're starting things off a little slow here with only three events in week one, but we've got a lot of infinite recharge to play this season. What events are you guys most looking forward to seeing? I'm really excited to see the PNW robots this year. Last year was the first year that some of these PNW teams came across my radar. I was uh, watching 2046. I was with them um, uh, in uh, in Houston, uh, and I was also watching 2910 at Champs. And so far, their robots have been super impressive. Um, I was very impressed by 4911's reveal last night, as we were talking about, and very much looking forward to the robots from 2406 Bare Metal and 2910 Jack in the Bot. As always, I'm kind of biased. I'm really excited for Arizona North this year. So far, it's looking like almost all of the classic Arizona teams, Team 60, 2403, uh, Team 2486, uh, 842, they're all going to be there, and it's going to be a competitive battle for the best Arizona team of that regional. I got the inside scoop uh, into the robot of Team 842. Uh, they're a uh, Hall of Fame team and a very successful team from Arizona. It looks like they may once again have one of the most competitive robots in Arizona. I'm also looking forward to Team 2478, Westwood Robotics, who had a stellar season last year. And to be a little arrogant, I am very genuinely excited about the robot that my team, Team 4183, is designed for this season. I don't think it'll be the best robot in the world, but I'm still pretty excited. You always got to show some love to your own team. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Well, also selfishly, I'm excited for the Idaho Regional. Aside from my former team, uh, 21-22, we've got California teams 3309, the Friar Bots, 2485 Warlords, 399 Eagle Robotics, and 2073 Eagle Force, just to name a few. And honestly, the team list is constantly changing. When I looked at it about a week ago, it was at 28 teams. Now we're at 40, I think. It could change tomorrow morning. Um but also visiting the Idaho Regional, as has been tradition in the last few years, is PNW Stalwart 1983 Skunkwork Robotics. Um, they'll be making the eight-hour drive down as well. And while I'm very biased, Idaho is one of my favorite events to attend. It has a neat atmosphere, and I promise there will be cookies if you decide to go. I also get to vote. Yeah, it's true, actually. Uh, our regional chairwoman walks around with a cookie cart, and it's it's awesome. It's amazing. Uh, I need to go. Yeah, <laughs> you should come to SFR. We got cookies at SFR too. <laughs> uh, I also get to volunteer at the PNW championships for the first time because they're closer to where I go to school, um, and it's gonna be my first time ever going to a district championship event. Uh, as someone who was on a team in a regional system, I'm excited to get a closer look at how the difference between regionals and districts changes the competitive flow, and also uh, just seeing the incredible growth in the PNW over the past few years. I mean, I remember the time when it was shocking when a PNW robot's wheels touched Einstein carpet. And now it's pretty, it happens pretty often. Um, but a couple of Rocky Mountain region teams I'm excited to see include 30-06 Red Rock Robotics, 3230 Prototype X, and 2996 Cougars Gone Wired. These teams fly under the radar outside of our region, but they regularly bring strong contenders to events, and I'm excited to see what they come up with. Nice. Of course, uh, I'm excited to see our district championship. It's always a great event, super competitive and well-run. Uh, but right now, again, being a little short-sighted, I'm just excited to see how this game plays out. I think that it's incredibly well-balanced and has a lot of potential for strategic depth. I have a really hard time you know, being able to predict what kind of strategies I think will come to the forefront. And uh, for that reason, I'm really excited to see the uh, Israel districts number one and two, especially going into the playoffs since we haven't seen really any um, competitive playoff play yet this season. I think that's going to be a big, uh, a big look ahead that all the week one teams get before they show up to their first events. And uh, I'll definitely be watching the stream in time. Like. Yeah, I'm also excited to see how the gameplay plays out this year. This uh, Infinite Recharge seems really awesome balance-wise. I think there's a lot of potential for it. I think one of the things I'm most excited for, which is a bit of a shakeup from last year, is I'm excited to see a game where the third bot's contribution is more than just being a brick wall on the field. Like yeah. last year, yeah. I'm going to say it, 4159, like we got to the finals in San Francisco, but all we really had was like a decent drivetrain and a couple of brain cells. And that I think went for <laughs> most teams that were doing really well as defense. Like you got rewarded for 
playing some pretty strong defense, but that wasn't the highest engineering challenge. But with Infinite Recharge, I think we're going to see a lot more metas start shifting around. We're going to see people really trying to build around either the control panel or the power ports, and they're going to figure some stuff out. Uh, strategic third picks, again, they could make or break an event. I think LAN is going to be testament to that go going forward. Um, I think it's going to be less of just blocking people off and trying to brute force your way and more of a may the biggest brain alliance win. So I'm excited <laughs> to see that come out. I'm also excited for uh, Silicon Valley Regional because that one's always fun. We're in our 22nd year, I believe. Um, and so that's going to be awesome wow. to see teams wow. compete. We got a lot of diverse teams coming in like Wingus and Dingus and uh, Thunder Down Under are going to be coming out to California. So I'm super excited excited to see them um, i'm also excited for san francisco regional because it's my hometown uh i love going to that event i love seeing all the san francisco teams duke it out for the title of champion uh 5700 won it last year they're the first san francisco team to win it and we'll see if they hold their title um so yeah i'm just excited to see how this game plays out holistically it looks like there's a couple of people in chat uh asking about the rumored 254 swerve this is the, the rumored 254 swerve. Yeah, this is the first I've heard of it. I mean, That's... I think it would be fantastic if they if they put that together. But 254 put time, something together almost... on FRC Deep Dive, and they actually showed mm, a swerve yeah. concept for that uh, a little while ago. Interesting. Yeah, I remember I, seeing that. I think it could be really cool, just because I mean they're one of the best teams out there, and their engineering is fantastic. But at the same time, like the oh, like. I've been involved in this for a while, so it'd almost be heresy. It's like such a, a team that's so ingrained in like the culture of developing and making West Coast Drive so popular, uh, doing Swerve. It would be really cool, but all at the same time, a little uh, a little controversial in my mind, you know? Right. Yeah. Well, having looked at Madtown Throwdown for the past couple of years, I think 254 has brought a few Swerve bots. I don't remember if they did it last year, but they definitely did it the year before, and they did not have nearly as much success with it as one would expect. So it could be something that they're fine tuning. It could be something that they're ready to debut, possibly to challenge uh, the uh, Madtown Throwdown robots or the not Madtown Throwdown, the Madtown Robotics uh, robots that they've been bringing out. They've been busting out Swerve for the past few years, and they might be ready to challenge that um, and get that title of World Champions back at Houston. <laughs> uh, but I don't, I don't think that 254 will do a Swerve, or if they do, there's got to be a real good reason for it, because I think you can get away with this year with a West Coast Drive. Yeah, yeah. I and would be very surprised this year to see them do Swerve. And uh, yeah. I, but I'll make the bold prediction right now that I think 254 will do Swerve someday. Ooh. Yes. Uh, <laughs> but oh I man, that it's my only reason I think that is that I, I think there's a general trend uh, that robots are becoming more optimized in first mm -hmm. and that yeah. the competition is becoming more fierce, especially at the top end. And uh, I think with a few years of uh, Swerve teams doing better on average uh, at the highest level of play, uh, 254 will have to make the switch. But it of course will depend on the game it always does and this mm. is not the game for it to be honest even though my team is doing swerve uh we really did it because uh with our preparation it's easier for us to do swerve than west coast Drive. so yeah. uh, that was just yeah. almost a lack of preparation to be honest um but when 254 does do swerve i think it'll be a uh, indication that the time for west coast Drive robots has passed us and that will probably be a long time down the road yeah so mm -hmm. we'll see yeah. yeah all right well don't forget that we will be accepting submissions for clips of the week be sure to post a twitch clip you've seen or a short video please no full match videos in the fun discord by monday at 3 p.m pacific time and let's see how many best of the west teams we can get on there well, that's all that we have time for tonight. Thanks to everyone for hanging out with us. Don't forget to vote in the FRC Top 25 polls opening on Sunday. You can find the links on First Updates Now's Discord, social, or on Chief Delphi. Fun needs your help to stay loud, live, and independent. Please consider giving your support by joining Fun Nation with the subscription or bits on Twitch. Becoming a Patreon at patreon.com slash first updates now. We're just letting people in first know that this is the place to be to get the information your team needs. Don't forget to check us out on Discord, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and live on Twitch. If you're watching live, our next show will be our Mexico recap show in Spanish. On behalf of myself, Bryce, Grace, Alex, and our producer, Tyler, I would like to thank you all for tuning in and thank our moderators in the chat. Talk to you next week on Best of the West.
Bye. Bye. Thanks for watching. If you want more fun content, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. You can also directly help support fun by visiting our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash first updates now or by subscribing at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Thanks to all of our co-executive producers on Patreon and tier two plus subscribers on Twitch keeping fun loud, live, and independent.